Good morning. So, oh, pardon my dog. <laughs> so I mentioned that um, I would do a video that goes like more in depth, no speed up, but shows how I do elastics, encased elastics. Um, some people do fold over elastics more like for covers. Um, I do encased, that's the pattern I have, that's what I've always done. So it's really easy for me, cause I'm used to it. Um, the video I posted yesterday, you actually may have noticed that when I was doing the back, I had to redo it because I got to about here and it popped off of my tool. So, still happens, no big deal. So let me see if I can angle my camera better. Hopefully y'all can see. Okay, so. These are my elastic casings. See the line? That is where the elastic will be. And you can see I have my top stitch and my casing. This is where I'm actually gonna stitch when I have my elastic through. See, also right here and right here. So that's actually how I measure, is I take my elastic, now I have 3 8 inch braided elastic. I showed this in another video. This is also braided elastic. This is from Joann's and it is crappy. I don't like it. So I like my spool. Um, so what I do is I take, here's where my elastics end and I go just a little bit past because I want a little extra because when I actually feed it through, I leave extra. So I don't stretch as I go along. I'm just literally laying it across and here's where my elastics end, the casing. So I'm gonna go a little further and that's where I'm gonna cut. And then I will cut it in half because that makes the perfect length when I actually put them in. So I do the exact same thing for the back. So I just lay it, here's the end. I lay it down a little past it, just lay it across gently. Here's where it ends. So I'm gonna cut a little extra. it in half and that gives me my back elastics so now the fun part is threading them through I have what's called a bodkin so let me see if I can if you can see that so you can see it has a hole mine's actually bent I've used it so much um, I think I straightened it but has a little ball on the end to help uh, feed it through. Um, some people use safety pins or paper clips. There's probably a squirrel on my fence. <laughs> um, I've tried. I always ended up getting it stuck. I never had, never was successful. So I paid the couple dollars to get one of these. Um, so yeah, all you do is you take your bodkin, you take your elastic because it won't just feed through, it's too big. So fold it in half, and it gives extra resistance when you're feeding it through pull. And you just feed it through. And then my husband, I tried explaining this to him and he was like, well, you could just, you know, push it through this way. You don't wanna lead with this end because then you have nothing to pull out. You always wanna lead with this end and you're gonna fish it through. So, let's see if I can figure this out like this. All right, so I have my elastics on this side. And you can see my bodkin is in there. And here's the end with the ball. And I'm just literally going to feed it through this little area right here where my top stitch ends and my casing. And I'm just feeding it through. So, and you do it gently, 
and I try and get my elastics to where they lay flat. Sometimes they don't. It's not always perfect, but it's okay if they don't lay flat. So I feed it through gently and then let me get it to where I want it. So you can see right there, that's the end of my elastic. So I usually actually leave about, I guess that's what, half an inch extra. So that's the tail of my elastics. And you can use fabric clips. Um, I will actually be doing another video as to why I don't use them. Um, I just pin but I pin within the elastic allowance, so, and I pin over, um, so there's about an inch between, um, so this, I've never had an issue. I've never once had leaking because of this, so, I mean, to each their own, whatever works for you, what works for me won't necessarily work for you, so then you just very gently, very gently pull it through a little at a time so you can see it's starting to come through um, and I so here's the end of the bodkin I actually pinch here and then pull this way to kind of give myself a little less uh, tension because it's once you get towards the end that it always wants to pop off which really stinks so you just keep gently feeding it through getting some of that resistance off and then we're at the end and you pull through so then I lay it flat and I look at where it lines up and get it to where I want it so you can see it's right maybe yeah, right there is where it's ending so I will pin it and because the elastics get so much wear I'm not going to do all the elastics, but because they get so much wear, um, I literally go forward like five, back five, forward, back two. So I don't just, you know, forward one, back one, forward five. Back, you know. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I go over it a lot so that it's very well secured. Um, when you're doing the back elastics, there's two different diaper styles actually, but for this one, I recommend threading through the pull first and then threading through the athletic wicking jersey because it's a lot more stretchy, has a lot more give, and is a lot more forgiving than the pull. The pull can actually be kind of tacky, so the elastic kind of sticks to it. So that's how I do it. Um, hopefully it helps. Let me know if you have any questions.